But look, let's um, ask um, Rich uh, answer uh, Rich's questions if that's all right, Lee. Sure. Um, he has. Um, he said, "Isn't beauty in the eye of the beholder?" Um, he's also said, um, "Does it also vary according to religious cultures?" Um, and he said, "My self image is great. I love me. <laughs> Just no one else sees it." Um, I love that. Um, he says, "I think confidence has to be backed by personality." Um, otherwise, you know, the people can come over as sort of boring or cocky um, or alpha male. I think that's just a bunch of statements, right? Uh, uh, no real questions that I can see there, Emma. But um, yeah, um, I think the older we get, the more we're not so attracted to, to, to the exterior. At least I'm experiencing that, like... Um, who the person is, how they show up, how kind they are, how compassionate, how, you know, they've got this phenomenal energy that just rubs off well on even anybody that comes into the contact. That appeals to me. Like that, and you, but when we're young, obviously, we don't see those sort of things, but that's what I pay careful attention to today. And I think that's what we all should, you know. So, um, yeah, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, especially when you when you become wiser. Um, yeah, I, I won't comment on the other three, Emma. You know, um, religious religion. I think we all know it. It affects. Uh, it affects how we see ourselves. Like, let's say you Christian, we've been taught we've been made in the image of God, and that's a healthy concept and idea to accept to be true about yourself. So, so of course, there's certain teachings or ideas that we get from different religions that would affect our self image. I agree. Um, okay, let's talk about how it works. Um, okay, so the self-image mechanism in your subconscious mind is a lot like an automatic pilot, an automatic mechanism in a, in a commercial air, aircraft. So let's say a plane uh, takes off from Doha in Qatar, and it's on its way to uh, Heathrow, uh, London Heathrow. And it hits some turbulence on the journey there over the Mediterranean. And the plane is taken off track. The automatic pilot in the plane will pick up the deviation from the set point, which is London Heathrow. Um, it will send a message or a signal to the, the, the turbines and the, the flaps and the thrust and the, you know, the flaps will shift. And eventually that plane will be brought right back on track and it will land at London Heathrow. That all happens automatically. Those two pilots can be sleeping up there, and that all happened automatically, right? There's a set point where that plane is going, and it's going to be kept on course uh, by this uh, automatic pilot. In fact, it's been said that a rocket fails its way to the moon, so it's also got the similar lead. It's got this uh, cybernetic mechanism, um, this cybernetics so so dr maltz actually wrote a book on self-image and for anyone watching this this is really a, a, a wonderful book um psycho cybernetics by dr maxwell maltz uh, psyche is the the greek word for mind and cybernetics is the science of control and communication in the animal and in some machine so this machine, the aeroplanes, got that automatic pilot, right, which is a cybernetic mechanism. Uh, then you've got maybe an aircon in your room or in your home somewhere. And, you know, down south here in South Africa, we're we, we in more or less in the, the middle of our winter, so it's really getting cold. You know, you've got your aircon set, let's say, to 23 degrees, and somebody opens up the front door. They don't close it um, after they walk through the door, and a cold wind blows in. And eventually you pick up, you know, it's getting chilly. You see the door is open. You close the door, but the temperature in the room is dropped. What happens is the thermostat, right, Emma, as you know, uh, in that air conditioner picks up that deviation from the set point, from the 23 degrees Celsius, and it starts blowing out hot air. Eventually, the room temperature will get back up to 23, and that air con will stop blowing out that hot air. That all happened automatically. The thermostat and that mechanism in the aircon, it's an automatic mechanism. Now, our self-image, your self-image, my self-image 
this is what affects our results. So our results in terms of if you're a salesperson, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, if you're a career professional, whatever your results, or, or, or let's say your, your results in property, in your property business, the amount of rent-to-rent -rent units you have, or, you know, um, uh, purchase lease options, I don't know, whatever terminologies you guys use, right, Emma, whatever results you're getting in the outside, that's a reflection of the, the thermostat inside. You'll find some people in sales, they might break out, you know, they might have a good week, but the self-image because it's constantly talking to you, it's either talking you into something or out of it, it picks up the deviation from that set point. Let's say you uh, you sell 100,000 rands or 100,000 pounds of whatever you're selling in the marketplace on a monthly basis. And you have a good week, you break out from that. Let's say you do 250. But then the self-image picks up the deviation from the 100 and it starts auto-correcting. It brings you right on course. You know, I'll maybe use a simpler example to explain how the self-image uh, operates as a, an automatic cybernetic mechanism within you. Let's say you've got a fat image. So you see yourself internally, not what comes back from the mirror. You see yourself as a fat person. And... You don't like what comes back from the mirror. So because you've got that image, right, it becomes manifest in your life. Your behaviors line up with that image. So eventually you start putting on some kilos. And you don't like what's coming back from the mirror. So then you go on a diet. You literally start starving yourself. You start eating rabbit food, right, Emma? And you, you know, you just cut back on the sugar and the carbs. And, you know, you're going hard. And what happens is you'll start shedding, right? So the pounds... Will start coming off you will start shedding but the self-image because you've got an image of an overweight person picks up that deviation from the set goal which is i'm overweight it picks up that deviation and bang the the, the behavior will start changing and eventually you'll come right back up to the weight where you were if not pick up an extra few kilos and this self-image is the reason why so many people up and down you know they they go like this throughout their lives you know they underweight overweight overweight, underweight, you know, they diet all their lives. If they just understood uh, this image, you know, that you've got this internal image. And if you shift that, the behavior on the outside, the shift there becomes automatic. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really critical that we, we upgrade the self image. Just a quick story on image. I worked with a lady in 2018, Emma, and um, talk about, I mean, this, this lady was intellectually brilliant. I mention a name, uh, Terry, uh, and Terry Oliphant, and intellectually brilliant. Like th this lady has a PhD in mathematics. Like I mean, clever, clever, and and she a, a senior lecturer at one of our top universities here in South Africa, and. Yet she would walk into her lecture walls the start of the year, and here were all these. I think in America, they call them freshmen, right? All these uh, newbies in the room, they've just come, just, just come into the university and she's standing on stage there and she's thinking to herself, they're going to ask me something I can't answer. I mean, she had studied, what, 10 years to get all of her degrees and her qualifications. There were kids straight out of school and she was thinking they're going to ask me something I don't know or they're going to catch me out. They're going to figure out I'm a phony or whatever. But all these ideas running around in her head. And, you know, as she got into this lesson on self-image, as, as she started to understand it, she wrote an image script of the lecturer who was confident, who stepped into that room uh, creatively and took charge, you know, was firm and, and, and direct. And she, she rewrote that image script uh, for a couple of days, she recorded it, but she kept playing with the idea, visualizing it. She'd done it over a couple of months. And she says one day, bang, it, it felt like she woke up a totally different person in a totally different world. And she says she walked into that lecture hall that morning. She stepped out behind the lectern and she handled the audience creatively or her, uh, her students creatively. She spoke passionately and she... and. Same lady, right, Emma? Same lady, same intellect, 
same amount of knowledge gathered, different self-image, different way in which she seen herself, and that led to her showing up differently. It's, you know, the self-image concept is so important for you to know. It's, I, I think out of all the mindset work I've studied, and I, I don't know if you agree with Emma, you, with this Emma, you might uh, comment on it. But out of all the mindset stuff I've studied, I think this is the the key component. Like it's it's the, I'd say it's the the, the top thing that we need to tackle is 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 upgrading the self image on your property journey. You have to, uh, if you want to get the results uh, with that's aligned with your goal, the goal you've set. You know, whether it's amount of money you'd like to earn passively uh, through your property portfolio or whatever it is. Um, you need to upgrade this image so it's in harmony with that. Yeah, I definitely would agree there, Lee. And also, I think there are some things that we do in self-development that, you know, if you don't literally have, you know, your, your million pounds in the bank or whatever it is, sometimes it's a bit more subliminal. But actually with your self-image, and, and especially I know we're going to talk about having a, a self-image script, like you said this lady did, she, she wrote down what she's done and, What's really incredible with that is there's quite a lot of kind of small bits that are very personal to you mm -hmm. in those self-image scripts. You know, your life is your life. And that's what Bob talks about, doesn't he? He says you be the leading role in your movie, not a supporting role in somebody else's movie. And that was really powerful. And I didn't really get it initially. And the more I kind of thought about it, I suddenly realized, ah, oh, I see. Okay. And uh, interestingly, for years, didn't we? I was always saying to you, oh, Lee, you know, my family are always take, take, take. And I, I never really managed to be, you know, organized because they always come in and do some stuff last minute. And then kind of over the years, I've just become this person who preempts all of these things now. So whereas I used to kind of blame everything, and it's a lot of little things that you come across that I've really seen those big changes. And of course you have some things that go up and down and you have ebbs and flows, right. but yeah. I really see the biggest changes of a lot of things. And I think that's incredibly rewarding and not something that I ever imagined, you know, even just walking down the street now and the way I greet people, the way I respond, you know, even this morning, you know, I spoke to somebody and I was doing something really for them. And they were quite aggressive and really ungrateful. And to me, I just came off that phone. I must admit, it's quite rare. I did shout in the car. <laughs> and I said a few unsightly words. I had just dropped my daughter off. And then I took a deep breath and I'm like perfectly happy because I know that that's what that person is like. I don't want to be like that person, but that's perfectly fine. That's what that person's like. I'm not going to change them. And so, yeah, I I, I kind of, yeah. So I t totally, totally agree with you on that one. But you kind of spoke with that, uh, the lady Terry. I mean, you basically described what we term as imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. so what is that? Is that literally just a reflection of our self-image, you know, why why is it that we would, like like you said, I mean, she knows so much. Why would she worry about somebody asking a question? Or why, you know, when you've been asked, for instance, like me this evening, you know, you've been asked to do a, a talk. Why would you not, from that, take it that clearly you are expert enough or you have enough information that would be of real interest? And it it does make me laugh. Even like some people have commented oh, it sounds like a really great topic. Oh, we're really looking forward to seeing it. And that's kind of a bit of a surprise sometimes to me. I'm a bit like, really? Mm. Oh, yeah, I, I suppose. Um, because I see everyone else as having done all these amazing things. And I think sometimes we don't always give ourselves that kind of credibility. You kind of allow it to go and you have to, you have to force yourself. In fact, I'm part of a mastermind group and, and next month we're all just coming together and all we're going to do is talk about our successes. So you ask why? Why do we have that imposter syndrome, that mechanism inside? I'll tell you exactly why uh, Terry did it. So, you know, after she had this epiphany, 
uh, around her image being the problem, you know, in her lecture halls, she backtracked it and she tried to figure, she tried to figure out, you know, where it came from. And she told me that when she was a little girl, she was very thin, like she was thin and she had bad skin. And she said she was teased every day of her life to the heel and back. Like it was just, she said, and, and, and I think that's where the concept or this inferior, so-called inferior concept of hers came from. At least this is, uh, you know, out of her own mouth. For me, I know, and, and I see a lot of people struggle with this. For me, it came from also being teased, also feeling like a misfit, you know, never fitting in any way. I didn't grow up with a father, you know. You know how some kids are, um, you know, always talking about, uh, you know, devaluing you. You know, kids can be a bit nasty, right? I mean, I remember some family members, some cousins saying, you know, you lost and found and things like this. And all of those ideas jabbed at you constantly create this image of yourself. And here you are 40, 50, 60 years old, and you've still got this inferior image. Like, have a healthy concept of who and what you are. You know, like I said earlier, be your biggest cheerleader. How are you going to expect anybody on the outside uh, to cheer for you or to affirm you if you're not affirming yourself? Because I promise you, even if somebody might like you initially, they might affirm, or affirm you. If you've got that internal thing going on, they're going to sense that energy and they are just going to mirror back exactly what you see uh, on the inside. So you have to. You know, what's done is done, right, Emma? What happened in your past, what happened in my past, anyone listening to this, Terry's past, it happened. There's nothing we can do to change it, but you can go ahead upgrading your image. And I think that's really the key in, in this mindset work. I think where that was huge for me as I was a, a real kind of a bit of a victim, mm -hmm. a bit, I felt a bit sorry for myself. I felt yeah. that... I didn't have control, but what I found working with you and, and you know, the Bob Proctor philosophy and, and thinking, think and grow rich is you absolutely have control and you absolutely can do things. And that was huge because I'd got to the stage where I didn't know what else to do and I didn't seem to be able to make any changes. And yeah, so I, was it was almost like a real sort of relief that there was something that I could do and I I could take control and it, I wasn't at the mercy of past things that have happened to me and that actually I can keep working um, to become this person and I anticipate you know that I'm this person now and I'm certainly in a process of, of of upgrading of of making those changes and I can Ooh. see myself getting to to another level or whatever it may be but I constantly see that going and going and going and actually I I'm reaching a sort of a pivotal age and I'm really I'm really actually really excited I had a few months where I felt very uncomfortable with it and now I've I've made a few changes and I've opened a few things up and I just think, wow, you know, I was had so much of my life was so much unknown, so much learning, so much in the wrong mindset. And now I feel I've got so many tools to move forward. And yeah, and, and certainly in the in the property world, the people that I mix with now, I could never have imagined being a peer or an equal. And I feel so fortunate, you know, to have that. But it's only because I have created something more than I was. Obviously, I've, I've done stuff, you know, um, but it's because of that. And also because of that, that openness to be, I think, humble to, you know, but to have that energy and people like being around that. And I've, I've definitely seen that. Emma, from the first time you and I had a chat, the first Zoom meeting we've hopped on to, to how you showing up today is totally different like it's it's night and day it's i mean you you've done so much good work on yourself and i mean you know it's the stuff is work right um there was something else you mentioned there at the end that i wanted to comment on i'll remember it will come back to me but um yeah it's 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 so many gifted people 
so many brilliant people out there. And you see this a lot, actually, in um, uh, Terry was telling me in, in academia. So with mm-hmm. these professors, these really smart people, but they hermits, they inward, you know, they 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 quiet and they, you know, they 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 can't interact with people because of this. But they're intellectually brilliant. Look, look.